Hi, folks. Good afternoon. Uh, well, the second day of OpenStack Summit, and uh, it's not yet the last session, so I'm hoping you're not uh, completely, you know, summited out. <laughs> um, my name is Tariq Khan. I'm with uh, Hewlett Packard Enterprise. And uh, today, uh, we're going to talk a little bit about uh, containers, and more specifically, containers within the NFV context. And, and talk about uh, what, what different options could be there for, for being able to use uh, containers within, within NFA. And uh, I'm sure if I start uh, talking about this slide, half of you are going to leave, because you must have seen it in every single, single uh, container presentation, you know, why people are using containers over VMs. But the point that I wanted to call about was that there are some very good reasons why containers make a lot of sense for enterprise workload, for cloud-native workloads and such. But, but the, the telco workloads, or NFE workloads as we call them, are slightly different. And, and the way that they're different are that you know, they, they require, when you, when you deploy these, you require a little bit more fine-grained control on how things are being deployed. And uh, if you have been coming to, to these sessions, I think the last couple of years, uh, there has been a lot of discussion around the specific telco requirements for OpenStack. A lot of those requirements are equally valid for, for uh, containers as well. So you need a little bit more control, a little bit more knowledge of the underlying lying, uh, architecture of the infrastructure. But besides that, if we talk about the, the mobile core, so some of the applications that are deployed to be able to run the, the our cell phone networks, uh, those, those applications like uh, virtual Evolve Packet Core or IP multimedia subsystem, they require, the VM sizing that they require, they're rather large. They end, typically when you deploy them, you assign full cores to them. So the traditional packing of containers that we are able to, to do, which is very attractive for, for deploying applications uh, as containers, that perhaps you know, there's only so much you're able to do. Um, the other thing is that for the same reasons, the, the workloads within containers are slightly longer lived. So you don't have, have VMs and containers coming up and down as much as, uh, for example, I, I think everyone would have not heard the number that uh, Netflix, uh, each workload is only live for, for around an hour, less than the time a, a movie lasts. And, and then, uh, I think uh, the last one is not going to be a surprise to anyone, especially if you're from, uh, from the telco side or from uh, the, the VNF vendor side, that there's just not many VNFs that are available as packaged as containers today. So there's uh, as much of knowledge and, and experience we have not been able to get. But now it's, it's, uh, it's definitely picking up. And I, I would say that in the last year, I have not spoken to any, any operator that's not looking to, to uh, uh, start investigating the use of containers within, uh, within the ecosystem. So uh, this, by the way, is, uh, is our take on uh, you know, comparing containers and VMs. You know? um, I'm sure some of these could have uh, very passionate conversations, um, but this is, this is definitely, this is subjective. But the point that we are trying to make over here is that, that containers and VMs are solving different problems. So it's not an either or. It's for specific problems, especially for, for telco workloads. It's going to be, you're, you're going to apply different things to, to, to solve those problems. And as you'll see, in certain cases, uh, by the way, where the circle is full black, that means that uh, we feel that is more appropriate for, for that row. And where it's more white, it means that uh, something's lacking. Um, so what, what it really means is that in certain things, one, one uh, deployment is, is much better than the other ones, or you know, in so, certain other cases, the other ones are, are, have some capabilities that are not uh, available other places. So having said that, container platform, again, uh, I'm sure most of you sat into the, uh, this morning keynote where the, the OpenStack container ecosystem was discussed. This always has to happen. Ah. So, so there's different ways of parsing it, and I think if you do a quick search of comparative container ecosystem, you'll have different ways of, of parsing the entire ecosystem. This is one of them. Uh, this is from Wikibon 20, 2015. I think you can already say some things have changed in this. 
but but it's a rather complex ecosystem, just like you know what OpenStack uh, as VMs has been trying to address. It's a rather complex ecosystem. It's not just you know use Docker and you know all your all your problems are going to be solved. And if you go to the next level in it, and again, this is not a comprehensive list of different technologies that are available at each layer, but there are a lot of technologies out there for every single layer. And, and what this slide doesn't show is that while each layer has different components, there are some stacks that are being developed, some of the popular players, they're developing stacks which address more than a single component, and, and which at times is, is absolutely you know, needed in the environment because that way you're able to very quickly get the platform up and running. But in other cases, you want a little bit of uh, flexibility to be able to do uh, and, and customize different layers uh, as, as you'd like to be able to do. So if we take the, 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 uh, you know, the stack that we talked about earlier, and then we try to bring it up to OpenStack, and in this one, I just assume, let's take Docker, which is the most common uh, container runtime. But instead of just taking the runtime, let's see if we use Docker Data Center, which is their Docker's uh, ecosystem. If we were to compare and contrast it with different OpenStack services, how it would look like. And you'll see that there are some places, and again, this is not in these kind of comparisons, there are always some things that you can talk about. This doesn't align with here, or this aligns with something else. But at the broad level, this is how these things align. And you'll see that in some places, Docker doesn't have an equivalent service. So there's, there's some things that, you know, if, for example, you're going to use even an integrated stack like Docker's with OpenStack, you want to be able to use the OpenStack ecosystem to provide those services. Block storage, absolutely, you know, that comes up that, uh, you know, Cinder providing black storage services. Docker does not have anything. You just use the, the uh, backend storage directly, like Ceph and all. Um, or object storage, another one. If you're going to be able to store your, your images somewhere, either you use a file system or, you know, OpenStack provides uh, um, object storage. Why not use that? Again, uh, if you look at identity, um, right now, if you look at it on the uh, Docker side, it's pretty much just go and integrate with LDAP, which doesn't provide what, what you're looking for. You can leverage uh, something like Keystone. But, uh, um, and as you see in monitoring, uh, there's a there's lot of, I, I know there's a number of uh, vendors over here as well, so a lot of different solutions, which perhaps you, know, you can look at Monasca to, to somehow uh, work at it. Um, now this is another slide I'm, I'm sure folks uh, from the telco side would be very familiar with it. So we thought that uh, perhaps we talked about OpenStack equivalency, but if we were to use containers and map them over to the Etsy architecture, this is the architecture that, uh, that uh, most of the telcos are uh, you know, within this area they're using to, to define the, the broader problem. Then we'll see that uh, one thing that doesn't change between the two is the hardware. You use the hardware, which absolutely could be the same as for hosting anything else. But the things that change are, are some of the other components that come and that are considered as part of, of NFEI or NFE infrastructure. In, in those things, essentially, it's something like, like a hypervisor that we use within, within uh, VMs would be provided by something like a, like a container runtime, in this case being Docker Engine. Um, you will have uh, the actual containers, which are basically the NFVI or virtual servers that you're going to use within uh, uh, Etsy, uh, Etsy uh, nomenclature. And then you'll have networks. Libnetwork is the one that comes with Docker, but of course you'll want to use something slightly better. Now there are certain, certain use cases where OVS DPDK is going to make sense, uh, specifically for NFV. Uh, quite likely in other use cases it may be different. But then we kind of go, go into the other parts. We can, uh, within, if we're just talking about using Docker data center by itself, then uh, there are some components that come along with it, which you'll, you'll assume as, as the virtual infrastructure manager for containers. And then if you have a SDN controller, if you want to put in it, Etsy didn't call it out separately, but SDN controller would be sitting in Vim as well. But, but these are things that the users or consumers of, of containers are not going to worry too much about. This is only for the ops guys who are building these systems and have to care and feed these things. 
the, the guys who, who are going to use this environment, they'll worry about the interfaces and what are the APIs that you're going to use to be able to, to access this. And they essentially come down to this, uh, this VI VNFM interface and the OR VI interface. These are the ones that VNF managers and NFE orchestrators use. And you are able to Docker swarm. If we use the Docker data center, they are going to provide these interfaces, which means your upstream system's got to be able to, to speak this language. There are other interfaces that come in play as well, but these are not exposed to the users. The one between virtualization layer and, uh, and hardware, and also the ones uh, between the VIM and the, and the virtual infrastructure. Again, they don't. Users are not going to worry about it as much, but the VNF vendors will, will quite likely have to worry about these interfaces. So, so far, I just uh, defined what, what, what if you know, containers make sense for, for NFV, and then how would some of the things, nomenclatures and, and different uh, architectures that, that the telco guys have been using within NFV, how containers or a container stack is going to, to look like. Now getting into a container platform. So when, when an operator is building a platform, obviously first you've got to come up with some requirements. And the first question is going to be, the, the workloads that I want to be able to deploy, are the workloads going to be coming as containers or VMs? And if someone is going to say that, you know, I just want to be able to support VMs or I just want to be able to support containers, and by the way, I know you can deploy containers on VMs as well, we're going to touch it, but if you were just going to do containers or VM, one packaging style that you're going to support, then a lot of solutions are there. You deploy, you know, a uh, number of different folks are good doing it, and almost every infrastructure vendor that's out here would have a reference architecture to be able to, to go about it. So we're not going to talk about that as much, because that doesn't change too much when you're running either telco containers or uh, regular containers. The other option becomes you know, containers on VMs. And by the way, we can, I'll broaden it a little bit. It could be containers or VMs or containers or bare metal as well. But when bare metal is managed as, as a tenant-facing service, i.e. bare metal using something like uh, OpenStack Ironic, it's going to be the same thing. So for this, uh, as you would have heard this morning, and there's a number of talks over there, that this is an uh, area, and I believe uh, that this session has been predominantly around you know, how one of the key topics has been how do we run containers and, and virtual machines together within the OpenStack infrastructure. And community is working on it. Uh, Magnum has uh, reached some level of maturity that you're able to start deploying it and, and start uh, testing some VNFs when the VNFs are available. And then this new project, Zoom, I'm very keen on sitting in it and trying to find out you know, uh, what is it that uh, that, that project is going to bring out. Courier, of course, makes a lot of sense in bringing not just the network, but other OpenStack services over to containers. So community is working on it, and we're going to have some, some solutions available to, shoo, excuse me, available today, some solutions coming out. But where I wanted to go was that if we want to be able to deploy containers and VMs, and what that means really is that we want to be able to use the native container stack and a VM stack together, then you know, what options are available. So that is what we're, we're going to look in the rest of the slides. So if we take this a little bit deeper, then we, we have to come up with what requirements for this platform that, that, that that'll guide us in building this, this, this thing. So first off is, you know, straightforward. As an operator, as a customer who wants to be able to run, you know, whatever workloads are coming, you want to have as much commonality as possible. So commonality in terms of, you know, acquisition, managing. So you want to be able to come up with a single platform and a hardware management platform, single way of getting things in and be able to manage the life cycle of, of the components that, that you can call it the, the under, under layer of, of containers. Then you want to be able to support multi-cloud, and uh, there were excellent presentations this morning at the Keystone, uh, at the keynote, uh, where, where we, we, it was shown how using OpenStack, you're able to deploy it to Amazon or to, to GCE. So similarly, you, your platform, you'll want to be able to 
support multi-cloud because what your VNF vendors are going to provide, you won't be able to control. And then there's a lot of other things that you want to be able to share between the two at a minimum. Quite likely more than this, but at a minimum, you want to be able to come up with some of these things that you, you, you uh, support. And then if you recall this uh, technology stack, you want to be able to map a, some, some container stack that you're going to pick, and you want to be able to map it to, to the technology, container technology stack. And in this one, we took the example of Docker data center, but this is as applicable for, for any other stack or a stack which is made up of components from other places. I know this one uses Docker Swarm as the, as the container management or orchestration system, but of course, you know, Kubernetes, Mesos, they, they are significantly more popular and more adoption, so they, they play in it as well. But the key thing being that you're going to pick up a stack and then there'll be some deployment choices that you're going to be making to, to be able to build your entire environment. And then you, you, what you want to be able to come up with is layer this, this environment around. You start with the, the, the platform, the platform management component. And in this one, the examples I'm taking is obviously some of HP components, but the approach is applicable anywhere. But you start with a common, common infrastructure and then common management of the infrastructure. And then what, what we are suggesting over here is that have some kind of a mechanism that from one place you're able to manage the, the underlay, or as we're calling NFV control plane. So you, you essentially be able to deploy your, your OpenStack, your, your uh, SDN controllers, and your, control, and your uh, container control plane as well. And by the way, the OpenStack that you deploy over here, now that Magnum is obviously it's part of Big Tent, and Magnum is now included in a lot of uh, distributions. So the containers on VMs, be it you know, on, on bare metal using Ironic or be it directly on VM, you do it through the OpenStack layer, but then be able to provide a, a native com container stack, stack on the side that can use some of these newer technologies that, that uh, these uh, uh, as we know, it's, it's a very dynamic environment, so you're able to provide some of these newer technologies and, and uh, bring it out. So for runtime architecture, um, I know um, there's uh, some comment made this morning, this uh, you know, one API to rule them all. And of course, that's the desire. We would love to have a single API where we're able to manage you know, all kinds of workloads. And, and there's this great effort going on within the, within the community to be able to do it. But quite likely, there will be cases where, where you may need to be able to expose the native API of the, of the stack as well. And what we are suggesting over here is that near-term deployment, especially for NFV, where most deployments are to, to familiarize with the, with the container technology and to be able to see how it's, it can integrate into the environment, we suggest that we, we expose both of the APIs, the native API of the container stack, whatever that, that exposes, be it Kubernetes, be it Swarm, Oh, and of course, expose the, the OpenStack API. And that way, the, at the, the NFVO level, the NFV orchestration level, you're able to create services, and, and those services could, could decide where, where the uh, deployments are, are going to go. So with that, just closing that uh, for, for such a stack, what we, we um, uh, feel that single API, even though it's desired by everyone, it may be a little while before it's going to, to become a reality. And until such time, we, we and, and to, to recognize that the velocity of, of development for both OpenStack and, and the container platforms is, is going at such a level that we plan for, for, for multiple APIs to be exposed upstream and build a platform that's able to, to support uh, the both containers and, uh, and uh, VMs in the same same uh, environment. That we have a couple of minutes, and if there's any questions, I'm happy to uh, answer. Yeah. And uh, since this was a sponsored track, uh, you know our guys always ask us to plug in our, our product, so I wanted to uh, do that. We do have a solution called NFP System, which is a integrated uh, offering, hardware, software, includes uh, our di distribution of OpenStack. Um, and our vision is that something like uh, this platform should be able to support containers in, in near term. So thank you very much. <laughs>